Okay, we are just days from an attempted assassination on former President Donald Trump. We've got top leadership in Washington, D.C. of the Democrat Party saying they fully expect him to become president and much, much more. To help me go through these top stories, I have Allie Legg. Allie, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. So, um, just some background on you. Ali is the director of civic engagement at Moms for America. She's the founder of Moms for Freedom. She's the co-host of Homefront Talk Show. She's also a U.S. Army veteran. I want to jump right into the biggest story in the news cycle. Um, we're just days out since the assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump's life. Um, you saw the details. I saw the details horrifying moment. Um, and yet at the same time, something isn't sitting right with me. Something seems off about the way the security detail handled this, uh, the fact that it happened at all. What are your thoughts on the day, the event? And do you think there's any suspicious activity? Well, I think uh, there are a lot of uh, questions, right? The, the, the people that have understood, that understand what goes into these operations as far as security goes, we are all kind of questioning what is really going on. And even if you don't have that kind of experience or expertise, you're looking at it and you're like, wait a minute. And the more you watch it, the more questions you have. I mean, how does a 20-year-old end up on top of a white roof in line of sight and gets a shot off on the president of, of a former president of the United States. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, it, there are a lot of questions and I've been listening to a lot of our uh, current congressmen um, and prior secret service members uh, speak about this. And it's really just, they are questioning it as, as well. And they're, they're trying to figure out, is it intentional uh, uh, lack of, you know, communication? Was it, was it a, a, a I mean, obviously it was a catastrophic failure, but at, at what level? And I think that those are important questions to figure out. My problem is, is that we are going to allow the FBI to investigate this, the same FBI that is arresting parents um, and investigating parents for speaking at school board meetings, the same FBI that is uh, arresting, you know, uh, uh, praying grandmothers on the Capitol grounds, the same ones that are arresting, you know, pro-life protesters at abortion clinics, like, these are the same people that have put, you know, domestic terrorists against MAGA and the word Chad and those that are saying America first and those that align with 1776, like the independence of America. This, These are the same people we're supposed to expect to investigate the assassination attempt and the catastrophic failure of the Secret Service. I mean, I have a problem with that. I think most Americans do as well. Yeah, no, I completely agree with everything you said. I mean... The, the same FBI, they're the ones that raided the president's home and were given uh, permission to engage with firearms if necessary. Right. They're the ones that infiltrated the January 6th um, a, a event and were, you know, causing chaos. Um, you know, many, many things. Uh, the Hunter Biden laptop. I mean, uh, the, the list the goes Biden. on. Yeah, Steven. It's so <laughs> it's like, OK, wait a minute. The American people are. Uh, already suspicious of the CIA, we've now become very suspicious of the FBI. But as you said, you know, people like Dan Bongino, um, Jim Jim Comer, others uh, in Washington D.C. They're now saying, "Wait a minute, the exact perfect place if you were going to snipe somebody was was unprotected, was not being watched, and it's it was the American people on the ground that were yelling to the police." There's somebody on the roof. There's somebody on the roof. And we now have details that, uh, you know, a police officer climbed up the ladder. Was His life was threatened. He went down. And, and this is what sparked everything. But do you would you imagine uh, similar to like the, the Boston Marathon bombing that they're going to start collecting uh, cell phone footage from every different angle in order to put this thing together? Well, I would hope so. I mean, the fact that we have reports that the FBI can't even get into the 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 perpetrator's phone. I mean, I, I think that's honestly BS, to, to be frank with you. I mean, they've already looked at our phones. They had no problems looking into the January 6th you know, defendants in their phones. Why is it now that all of a sudden they can't figure out how to gain access to a perpetrator's phone? I have questions about that. That doesn't make any logical sense at all. And, and so I do think that um, one... 
there should have been aerial support. I don't know where that was or why that wasn't there. Um, but also the fact that we, th there does need to be an investigation for sure, for sure. And the people that are around cell phones, whatever it is that they can utilize, this is what, this is what FISA a te technically is supposed to be used for, right? And the fact that they're not using it for this and they're using it to attack normal everyday Americans, there seems to be like this lapse of communication, this two tier, which is what we keep talking about, two tier justice system, uh, this weaponization of our government. Um, it's very concerning. It is very concerning. Yeah. A um, couple things that I've seen on the Internet that are concerning to me is the, the number of Democrat uh, people in leadership positions that were saying things like, you know, I can't believe the shooter missed or, um, you know, oh, we are against violence. And yet there's video of them encouraging their voters to be violent. Um, Benny Thompson, who led the January 6th committee. He also said there's no place for violence, but his top staffer uh, said, we're against violence, but really, why don't you take some shooting lessons? I mean, these are people that I think they should maybe uh, lose their jobs, um, you know. Should be investigated. Uh, yes, I know. I know Donald added, Trump. Added to a watch list. I mean, this has been something that has been going on for the last eight to 10 years, Stephen. Uh, Republicans and conservatives have been have been unequivocally attacked in the media. The media is the most effective devil in America right now. They are the enemy, public enemy number one, because they are participating in the rhetoric that MAGA are extremists. That's literally more than half of the country right now uh, that support President Trump. They are calling normal everyday citizens domestic terrorists just because we question the, the outcome of the 2020 election. We've been silenced. We've been kicked off platforms. We can't use PayPal or Venmo or, or uh, uh, anything of that nature because we're being completely stripped away from not only our constitutionally protected rights, but our civil rights. I mean, this is what else did they think that they were going to to incite. This is exactly what it's been since, since even since uh, the summer of love, we've had, you know, congressional uh, people, right? People that are sitting in Congress right now uh, saying that you have to get into their faces. And this is what happened. And you saw cities burn down. You saw people die in broad daylight and even, and even um, at night uh, during all of these riots that occurred during, you know, 2021, the summer of love and nobody got in trouble for it. Nobody has been investigated. Nobody has been brought up on charges. And yet these, uh, um, representatives that have been hired to represent the people, not their political ideologies, right? The people have been inciting violence for the last 10 years. What else did they expect was going to happen? And then they turn around and say, oh, it's time for us to cool down. It's time for us to take some, you know, self-reflection. Yes. How about you self-reflect, right? Because it's not our fault. And I love how they're trying to, how they're trying to paint it, that he was a Republican. This is, this uh, would-be assassin uh, was a Republican. Yeah. Well, Pennsylvania is also an open primary and we have evidence that Democrats have registered as Republicans to vote for the lesser stronger Republican, the weaker Republican uh, in the primary, presidential primary. So that's not shocking, right? But the fact that they're trying to use it as a way to tell us already the narrative, to get us to plant those seeds so that we can think about, oh, well, it was okay because he was a Republican. You know, President Trump caused this on himself. That's BS. Yeah. Now, yeah. And there's a lot of people uh, on MSNBC that were saying, you know, Trump brought this on himself. This is Trump's fault. In fact, um, they canceled Morning Joe today because they were so worried about the fact that they they might have guests that say this was Donald Trump's fault. Whenever you blame the victim, they do this with sexual assault. They blame yes. the woman. Um, you know, when children are assaulted, they blame the children. It's like it's so disgusting to me. Um yes. I don't know if you saw this or not, but the mayor of Washington City, a Democrat, mm -hmm. he is now publicly saying uh, that Donald Trump and his election team rigged and staged this assassination attempt in order to garner uh, sympathy votes from the American people. Um, you know, you and I believe that this is sus suspicious. Uh, but it's more likely that the FBI or the CIA or the deep state was doing this than Donald Trump. I mean, they've brought in gunshot experts, bullet 
uh, experts and they're, they're showing these diagrams of Trump's head. And he literally in a microsecond tilted his head and avoided having this, you know, this horrible life ending uh, injury. What are your thoughts on this Democrat mayor saying that Trump staged this in order to get sympathy votes? You know, and I'm going to try and be as 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 polite as possible. This is coming from the people that are supposed to be the educated suburbanites. This is not this is not intellectually correct. Uh, they lack they lack comprehensive intellectual intelligence. Um, if you think that the president and his team uh, staged. And an attempted assassination on his life just to gain support. He has already gained massive amounts of support from every different demographic here in America. He did not need to be shot at to gain more sympathy. That is absolutely ridiculous. And anybody that thinks that way clearly doesn't understand the climate that we're in. Um, and when you look at President Trump's reaction to what happened. You do not go into a high stakes situation like that, get shot at, right? And stand up knowing that they're not even knowing if there could be another shooter. You stand up and the first thing you do is lift your fist and say, fight, fight, fight. Are you kidding me? That is the character of a strong leader. That is, that is something that is innate within you. You don't practice that. That's not something that you can just automatically uh, just think that it, it was okay to do in, in, you just can't, you can't, you can't rehearse that. That was something that is innate within him. He is a strong leader. You know, he's so badass for that. And I just, I love him even more for even just thinking to do that. So yeah. anyone that thinks that is just, they're, they're wildly mistaken. Yeah. Uh, you know, after getting his, his ear uh, fixed up, he jumps on his airplane and goes to the UFC fight. I mean, th this is why he's a fighter. He literally surrounds himself with strong uh, fighters that love our country. And this love of country is what I believe is guiding him. I mean, the guy is worth four or five billion dollars. Mm -hmm. he, he was president for four years and collected zero dollars. His net worth went down, his reputation, everything. Like this is not a job he needs, but this is a job that he feels he is uniquely uh, qualified in order to be a leader for the country. Um, I wanted to just switch gears here for one second. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Trump got massive news out of Florida. Judge Eileen Cannon in this absolutely ridiculous lawsuit where they're saying that Trump committed espionage, like he was selling government secrets. Like, why does a billionaire need $10,000 for selling secrets, right? He doesn't. Right. Um, it and, doesn't make and, any logical sense at all. Like this, yeah, is, and, this is what we were talking about, right? Like they always say that that our side is doing something that either their side has done or is doing. And that is just a fact. You can look it up. You can fact check me if you want to. But that is actually how that happens. I mean, it's narcissism. Yeah. And, you know, earlier we talked about the, the FBI is going to be investigating this. It was the very FBI that staged the secret documents photo in order to embarrass and humiliate him. And now we're supposed to trust this group is going to go through cell phone footage. They're going to look at this assassination attempt from every single angle. I, I call BS. In an unbiased I just, I way, Stephen, in an unbiased way. That And that is what scares me is that it has to be an unbiased way. And what we've seen over the last several years is that our, our government, those that are currently in charge in these three letter agencies, in our DOJ, in our FBI, in our CIA, at our White House, they are not non-biased. They have their own bias, they have their own agenda, and they are clearly going after political opponents. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, it, it's so evident. Um, I don't know um, what we don't know who this is because they want to re rena remain anonymous. But right. according to the Daily Mail, a top Democrat leader in Washington, D.C., announced that many within the Democrat Party fully expect Donald Trump to become the 47th president of the United States. Now you have AOC from New York. She's throwing a baby fit saying, I want to know who this is. I want them kicked out of Congress. You're a, you're a fake Democrat. I want you removed. Like, do you think that there is some truth to what this anonymous Democrat leader is saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. I and mean, this has been shown in history. I mean, Ronald Reagan was shot at and he won in a landslide. 
Um, you don't shoot at a president or a presidential candidate and expect them not to win. You just don't. I mean, it, it, it with the amount of support that he has gained over the last several years because of the catastrophic failure of our government currently, of, of our current administration, uh, with our open border, with with crippling inflation, with wars around the world or emanating wars around the world, conflicts around the world. And we were so, every, the American people understand that we were better off four years ago, okay? Everybody understands that. And I speak to parents from across, the, from across this nation. I speak to veterans from across this nation. Everybody understands that we were, we were way better off four years ago. And this, I honestly believe that this was a wake-up call. There's nobody that they can put up uh, against President Trump in order for them to win. We yeah. will win. Yeah. But yeah. we cannot be apathetic. And I know that he's up, he may be up in the polls. And yes, this may look like it's going to be a landslide in November, but we have to make sure that we are out there poll, walk, poll working, poll watching. We need to make sure that we're registering people and encouraging them to go vote because yes, it doesn't matter if they're registered. What matters is if they're going to go vote. And if you're not watching the votes and you're not in there paying attention, you're not talking to your sphere of influence, it doesn't matter if he's up in the polls. It doesn't matter if you think it's going to be a red wave. We have to actually participate in our freedom. Yeah, absolutely. We have to make it so. Yes. Um, I love that. Okay. So let's assume, cause I I'm with you. I believe he's going to win in a landslide. Um, Joe Biden is just, his mental capacity is going down so quickly. I've been saying since the summer of 2020 that he had dementia it was so obvious in his first year. I think they put him on Alzheimer's medication personally. Um, but um, I believe that Trump is going to win. If he does, as uh, the, the you know, in your role as mom, uh, Moms for America and Moms for Freedom, what are you hoping that Donald Trump will do for families and for the children of this great nation? So first of all, I want him to close the border. That's the first thing. The first thing is the border needs to be closed and secured. And we need to make sure that we are vetting those that have come through our um, our border illegally and they need to be rounded up and brought back out of the border and for for them to go to wherever country they came from. Uh, we need to re-implement uh, all of his, the policies that, that kept our border safe uh, because it is a national security issue and we are not an open border country. We don't have a country if we have open borders. I'm sorry, uh, especially from people that uh, we have sleeper terrorist cells that are currently sitting uh, in America right now. Like this is this is ridiculous. So that is number one. Number two is we need to make sure that we um, are bringing down inflation the best that we can. We need to be energy independent. All of these things are important. But I think one of the most important things uh, as a mom, right, is we need to make sure that uh, we figure out what to do with the Department of Education. The Department of Education has crippled and failed our children and our children are the future of this nation. And if they are not getting properly educated and they don't understand why liberty is here in America and why we are the beacon of hope for people across the world, then they will not have that patriotic spirit that continues to push forward the America first, right? Which is how we were founded, why we were founded. It is not a new agenda. It has been it has been the only uh, agenda for America. Um, then we will lose it. Yep. We are never one. Gen we are always one generation away from losing our freedoms and our liberty. And if we are not teaching that and instilling that in the next generation, then what are we doing? And if they're not being taught how to properly read, write, and calculate math, how to be innovative, how to think for themselves, how to prepare themselves for life after school, whether it's college or a, a, straight into the workforce or becoming an entrepreneur or CEO of some kind of business, then we will not have the American ingenuity that we once had and we will not be the America the great that we all know uh, and want to strive for to become a more perfect union, right? That's the point. Um, and so I think trying to figure out what to do with that, either dismantling it, dialing it down, bringing it back to the states so the states can control the education, which they can. I think almost every single state can fully fund their public schools, but it has to be done the right way. Um, and you have to make sure that you have good governors in office. You have to make sure that you have good legislators in office and good school board members. And that always takes place in the primary. So yes, it's important for us to understand that Trump needs to be elected in November, but we also need to make sure that he has reinforcements during the primaries. 
right? Because he can't get past his agenda um, and to make America better uh, and, and bounce back from what we've seen over the last four years if he doesn't have the Senate, if he doesn't have the House, if he doesn't have the states that are going to back him up, if he doesn't have the school boards that are going to understand that we cannot deal with the uh, teachers unions, that we cannot deal with these radical agendas that are pushing sex cults and 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 um, psychological weaponizing weaponization on our children to make them hate our country and hate themselves and become victims instead of victors, uh, we will lose this country for sure. So that's yeah. something that I think um, parents definitely understand. Yeah, well, I think- <laughs> I know that was a um, mouthful, I'm sorry, Stephen. <laughs> no, that, that's okay. Um, I, I think, you know, that they've been pointing out a couple of big groups in order for Trump to win. Uh, number one, suburban women. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, gun owners. A lot of gun owners don't vote. Um, uh, and I didn't, I didn't realize that. I would think they would be the first ones <laughs> in line, but uh, apparently, according to the data, they don't. And so that's been a big push within the, the Republican Party this, this last go around. Um, and then um, families, parents, right? Yeah. Look, at, uh, look at Virginia, for example. You had uh, the, the governor there, um, Glenn Youngkin. Mm -hmm. He was down. And then this story comes out that parents are going to school board meetings and they're saying, we're very concerned about the curriculum, CRT, uh, you know, critical race theory, um, uh, transgenders in the bathroom. And they, they literally get the FBI to start looking at parents mm -hmm. as if they are terrorists, yep. right? They literally um, called us domestic terrorists. Exactly. And, and, and so then in, in that particular state, you have a, a boy who pretends to be a girl. He goes into the bathroom and ends up violating multiple girls mm -hmm. during school. Like th this is where students should feel safe. And yet the faculty, the principal has put these, these girls at risk of a, a testosterone filled young man uh, being allowed to go in, into the bathroom. This ends up flipping things and the Republicans realize, oh, wait a minute, parents, parental rights, education, this ends up being a, a really big story going forward. Um, I, I'm sure you've seen that with, with Moms for America. Do you think that uh, more parents are waking up now than ever to being more involved in school or is there still a lot of work to be done? Oh, absolutely. I think it's both and, right? Like we didn't get here within the last four years. We are just becoming aware of how bad our education system is. Um, and that was due to 2020. The lockdowns uh, really opened the eyes of a lot of parents across the nation uh, by seeing what was really going on behind the scenes in our schools. And the more we push back, see, this is, this is what the left tries to say. They like to say that parents showed up at school board meetings all of a sudden, out of nowhere, complaining about things that weren't there. What happened was we were literally in our houses working simultaneously trying to teach our children while they were being remote learned at home. And we were listening to the rhetoric that was coming from the teachers that we ultimately pay their tuition for. They, we pay their salary. We pay the bills that uh, run the schools. We pay for the schools in our communities. And this is what our children are being taught. My child at the time was told that the Constitution could be suspended under emergency rule by a history teacher. And it wasn't unique to just my child. And this is in Florida. OK, so the parents have understood. And when we came, we were kind of like blowing the whistle like, hey, I don't know if you're aware, school board member, because you are not instructional. Right. That's not your job. You are there as an administrator. You are there to make sure that the laws that get passed and the policies that get put into place by the Department of Education in your state get implemented through the school board. And that is what a school board member's role and responsibility is. And so parents went there doing their due diligence, like, hey, we're blowing the whistle. This is what we're seeing. Y'all need to do something about that. And they doubled down. They didn't look into it. They doubled down. They uh, arrested parents. They uh, sued parents for filing FOIA requests. They uh, dismissed us. They silenced us. It was absolutely ridiculous. And then we started noticing all of the sex cult, right? They wanted to beef up uh, sexual education and make it, made it more pornographic, uh, where you had teachers that were actually teaching students how to, put on, how to put on condoms, okay, in the middle of school. 
with children that are in like third grade. What is going on here? And so when parents started discussing this, we're like, we're seeing all of these books. There's over 300 books that are sexually explicit. And I mean, explicit to the point where if it was set on TV and it was set on the airwaves, they would be fined astronomically because of the FCC standard laws. So the Federal Educate, Federal Communication Commission. Um, but if it, if it can't be shown on TV and it can't be set on airwaves, why is it allowed in my child's classroom? And those are simple questions, but we were considered domestic terrorists. So yes, parents are waking up to this, but yes, we still have some parents that can't choose you know, to uh, because of the way the economy is right now, uh, we have parents that are working two or three jobs just to keep the, the groceries on the table um, and the roofs over their heads. So we have a situation that I think needs to be addressed for sure. And the way we do that is by making sure that we get good representatives in office that understand their proper roles and responsibilities, but also support from the communities uh, when, once they're elected. Yeah. OK, final two questions. I appreciate you coming on. Um, you know, you've got military background. We've got this border situation. We're literally being invaded. Democrats pretend we're not. Donald Trump sees it for what it really is. Do you see the military being used in some capacity to secure the border once he's back in office? I would think it would be more of the National Guard, uh, which is sort of along the same lines as our military, but I think that is what our military is, is essentially for, right? We are supposed to protect our nation first. And he has, our president, president, should I say our president, because he is our rightful president. I mean, no one else deserves to be in that position right now uh, than President Trump. So, um, and I've had the privilege of meeting him and I've, I, he is just an incredible man. Um, so I do think that the love that he has for our nation and the respect and reverence that he has for our troops and the reverence that they have for him and our nation, I think that anybody is willing to serve under his presidency and would be excited to do so. And uh, I do believe that if that was the call, we would answer. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, you bring up a good point because I, I'm sure there's a lot of men and women in the military right now that are like, man, you you put me on the border and I will protect the country. Um, and, and that's not happening. At the same time, you see suicide rates are at the highest they've ever been among border patrol. So this I mean, this this border situation has greater ramifications than most people realize. Yeah. Um, last question, as uh, Donald Trump was arriving at the RNC in Milwaukee, he comes down the stairs. He's greeted by dozens and dozens of people in the Air Force, men and women in uniform. Mm -hmm. You can see they're giddy. They're excited to meet him. Uh, and, and so I see that with my eyes and I hear it with my ears. But then Democrats on left leaning media today are saying the military doesn't like Donald Trump. They're worried about him coming back in during the debate. Uh, this debunked story that Trump called uh, dead, dead military people suckers and losers. I mean, so disrespectful. It's been debunked. And right. yet they drag that lie out. The really good people down in Charlottesville, that's been debunked. Right. right. So do you think the military actually uh, has respect for Donald Trump? Or do you think there's any truth to what the Democrats are saying? There is zero truth to what the Democrats are saying, um, <laughs> as we we know, right? Uh, and I honestly believe that uh, our troops, I mean, I don't think there's ever been another president that has loved our troops as much as he does. You know, when you look at the, 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 the stark comparison between who is currently sitting in our White House right now and the last four four years, the last eight years of President Trump being in the limelight as a political, um, uh, as somebody in, in politics, right, a political headman uh, for the Republican Party, you can see the difference between how they treat our troops. I mean, we had 13 dead soldiers that were coming off of an aircraft draped in our flag and our current president didn't even salute. He looked at his watch. 
when you have a president, President Trump, everywhere he goes and there are troops, he feeds them and they are always excited to see him. There is never a troop or a, a, someone that is in our military that will not shake his hand, that will not try to get a picture with him, that will not try to salute him. He is loved and adored by our military. I mean, and, and look at just the numbers that we're struggling with, right? Like one, they mandated a COVID vaccine. It's not even a vaccine. It's it's a gene therapy. It's, a, it's an experimental drug gene therapy that they force on our military members who are the first line of defense, right? And they had no ability to say no. And if they did say no, they were kicked out. So why are we having such low um, uh, recruitment rates, right? It's because nobody wants to serve under this president. The president who does not have reverence, who does not care about our troops. And you can tell, right, by every stretch of imagination, you can see it with your own eyes. You can hear it with your own ears. But when you turn around and you say, if Trump was president, would you serve? Every time I ask that question, I always get a yes. Even if even if our veterans, because I talk to our veterans as well. I'm the national uh, operations coordinator for, for Operation Free Nation, and we are run by a bunch of veterans. Um, the president is an actual uh, badass. He's a prior CB, Navy CB. And, and so we always say that our, our oath doesn't die just because we're no longer in. Um, but if we were asked to serve again, I most definitely would serve under President Trump. Yeah, well, that's great. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, you know, a, a mom for freedom. Um, you're teaching your own children. We had proof that your children uh, exist. They were <laughs> yes. in the background and they did awesome. Um, thank you so much for fighting for families, for fighting for our children. We've got to get this gross garbage out of the school systems. Absolutely. And it's people like you that are helping the rest of us know how to properly fight, bring this to the schools, um, you know, get our voices heard. So I really appreciate you doing everything that you do. If people want to follow you online, Allie, what's the best place that I can send them? So one thing, one last thing I would like to say before I give all that information out, if I may, is that liberty requires a very significant level of sacrifice. It's your time, your money your life, or all three. What are you willing to give to, to preserve liberty for future generations? President Trump is willing to take a bullet for you. Make sure that you are going out, speaking in your circle of influence to get people involved locally, because like General Flynn says, America's general, local action equals national impact. If you want to save this nation and preserve it for the next generation of patriots, the next generation of Americans, to continue to be the beacon of hope for the world, you need to get active locally, okay? Um, and you can find me at Allie, uh, Real Allie, at Real Allie on Twitter. Um, I'm also on Instagram. And you can also email me at Allie, A-L-Y, at momsforamerica.net. I have all kinds of training and information that you will need in order to help you be the tip of the spear in your circle of influence. Okay, great. Thank you so much for uh, offering that up. Um, I appreciate this. This has been a great interview. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. You as well.